Good afternoon and welcome to another presentation that I'm giving today. Um, this time about portrait photography and what I'm interested in doing is talking through some of my photographs, some of my portraits, discussing a bit of background behind them and how I arrived at, at getting them. So my first portraits really started in the early 1980s. I wasn't very good at portraits really. I found it quite intimidating taking portraits. And this particular portrait of Sarah, who was a friend of mine, um, was taken surreptitiously, really, as you can see, um, at Henley Royal Regatta. And she was just glancing up at me as I was taking the photograph. And I've always cherished this as, a, as one of my great photographs. You might not agree, but, you know, let's think about why it is a good photograph. And it's made a good photograph, I think, because of A, expression on her face, and B, the woman sitting behind down on the on the with the hat on the um, uh, on the rug on the ground behind having a picnic I think those two kind of elements help the, sh the shape of the picture and make it make it come true but I've done lots of photographs in awkward places this was Jane Corbin who's a journalist that I work with uh, this was in Gaza in 2014 in a bombed out school um, it had been bombed by the by the Israelis and Jane was just standing in the room and I just said, hey Jane, I need to take a couple of stills for the programme, let me um, let me take your picture. She just turned and I took a couple of pictures of her. And that's as simple as it is. Many of the photographs you're going to see in this presentation have all been taken in a very, very short amount of time. Uh, Vanessa Lambert's a friend of mine who is a poet and she's an acupuncturist and she lives in Oxford and she wanted some portraits taken um, some informal portraits taken of her and I took this one in 2020 and then she had a book of her poems come out and she wanted another portrait um, two years later Well, so I took this one in 2022 I was part of a series of pictures but it's very informal you know, not lit um, kind of portrait um, Joseph Kony was a warlord in northern Uganda in the late 2020s, late 2010s, 2012, uh, there was a, a video came out called Kony 2012, and I did a film about it for Panorama, and one of the people we talked to and interviewed in this program was Joseph Kony's sister, and I took this photograph of her in her village, and it, again, this was just taken very quickly, she just sat down, she was sitting down anywhere, and I just said, I want to take your photograph, and I took about 10 pictures of her, and this was one of them, and the same job we went to visit some IDPs, internally displaced personnel in, in, in the Congo and DRC, the, the, the um, Democratic Republic of Congo and these guys were just, you know, they were doing some work, they were cutting maize I think in the background um, and it's just the expression on their faces, this kind of thousand mile stare of these people who have just been through horrendous things and on the next side of the coin is a former boy soldier from the Lord's Resistance Army, which was Coney's um, army, and th it's this thousand-mile stare, and he'd been repatriated, or he'd been taken prisoner, I suppose. Um, he defected, that's the word they use, from the Lord's Resistance Army to the Ugandan army, who held them captive in uh, South Sudan, and he's part of a large group of boys, but... I mean, look at their eyes, they're just staring into oblivion, really. And again, you just stand in front of them and just say, let me take your photograph. And you just, they look at you and you take your, their photograph. And, you know, it's just amazing the kind of expression that, or the lack of expression they have in their faces. And that just tells so much about the story. But I think you need to know a little bit about the backstory before you, um, before you take the photographs. And when you're looking at the photographs, it helps if you know a little bit more about them. So part of the thing we were doing when we were looking for Joseph Kony was we went out with the Ugandan People's Defence Force, the U UPDF, um, and we went to the jungle on one of their patrols looking for looking for Joseph Kony. We didn't find him, but um, we were tooled up just in case. Well, the army were, I wasn't. I was tooled up with a camera, and uh, this is when we stopped for, for a, a break and about a 10-mile hike that we were doing through the rainforest and which was pretty grueling and I just managed to get this picture of, of the machine gunner from the unit and then on more sort of st stable ground uh, this was taken, this is my most recent portrait actually I took this a couple of days ago of Hugh Cornwall who was a musician and used to be one of the band members in the Stranglers um, kind of I suppose probably one of my heroes you know I, and I do get to interview and meet some of my heroes 
uh, which is always a bit strange. And again, they want pictures for the program. So I said, Hugh, can I just take a few stills of you? Sure. And here we are. This is the end result. And again, on the same program, we were filming this, this woman, Dr. Sarah Crowther, and she was talking about, actually, on this particular instance, when she was talking about the film The Exorcist, which in 2023, which is why I'm recording this, um, is is going through its 50th anniversary. And this is a very straightforward interview. And most of my pictures, I love doing black and white. And so this is one of my rare color pictures. But, you know, sometimes you, it's not just the, the a photograph of somebody just being sitting still and staring at the camera sometimes you want to catch the capture their moment uh, their emotions and and i think this just looked fantastic with you know great teeth and stuff like that but i think it's just a much more powerful picture in black and white i, I really do anyway back to uganda or, or drc and and again refugees we got internally displaced personnel who are in a refugee camp in drc and look at the you know it's the same story that those eyes just all say the same story you know they've just been to hell and back these people you don't know what their stories are but you can just imagine what they must have been through and you know young kids growing up in this environment absolutely horrendous um and there's a lot of military people around, you know, union peacekeepers in that part of the world doing various jobs. These guys were for, from the Guatemalan army, army hunt, and they were working as UN peacekeepers in, in the region. Uh, this chap here, Caesar Achalam, was one of the uh, Lord's Resistance Army commanders. Uh, again, he defected. He was formerly actually a, um, a Ugandan army commander who who then went or left and and went and fought with the Lords Resistance Army. So he became the enemy, and then he then he came back to uh, to to uh, give himself up to the UPDF. Um, Susan McClellan was one of the journalists we were working with when we were in Uganda, uh, and this is a photograph I took of her in Scotland um, soon after we'd done the filming. And the reporter that we worked with was Soris Samura, who's uh, from Sierra Leone, a um, very accomplished African reporter, and a uh, uh, you know, good bloke to work with. Then I went off and did another film in Fiji. I think it was something to do with money laundering or something like that. I can't remember really. And this is one of the guys we interviewed. But it's, again, you know, we, t we take photographs. I do a lot of these photographs are just taken as what we call production stills for, for the productions that I'm working on. Um, and I, I don't remember who the, half these people are, to be honest. Um, so this is just, you know, it, it just... I captured this portrait and I just thought it was worth including in this presentation. And again, another guy, but this kind of worked better in colour as a colour image, I thought. So I've left it as a colour image. Um, I also did a quite a lot of film, uh, filming about uh, Annie Dewani, the, 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 the woman who was murdered in a taxi, supposedly by her husband. And two of the people we interviewed were these forensic scientists. And we were doing a reconstruction in a similar type of car that the one that she'd been killed in. Um, and we filmed that in an underground car park in London, in fact. Uh, and again, I, I took this picture to help with the publicity of that of that film. Um, Masha Gessen, who's a staunch anti-Putinist journalist, um, who we did a film about. Um, we did a film about Putin, actually, about the new Tsar, and she was one of our interviewees for that. Um, Cape Town Gangsters in 2013. Um, we did quite a lot of filming around that, um, looking at how football actually helps to get these guys out of the, the cycle of violence and thuggery that they're involved with. And one of the main protagonists on this was a guy called Martin Africa, um, who is photographed here with his hands in the gangster style handgun thing and you look at the 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 tattoos on his arms or which some of which were acquired in prison and another photograph of him in Elsie's River which is one of the townships just outside Cape Town another film we did was a film uh, I've done several films in fact about Siroxap which is an antidepressant drug which causes quite a lot of younger people certainly to commit suicide when they take it and this was uh, the mother of one of those people and it's a very informal kind of portrait as quite often these are um, you just grab these pictures when you can and that's what portraits 
are about. You know, it's it's looking at studying people, isn't it? And it's not necessarily people in isolation like this Ukrainian airman who was waiting for the Russians to come and take his base over in 2014 when the Russia was in the middle of annexing it. But uh, you know, a portrait is not just a single person; it could be groups of people. And the guy standing there s in the middle is the is who's the one who your eye is drawn to because he's actually looking straight at the camera. Um, and sometimes they're not looking at the camera at all. So this is the base commander who uh, was on the phone trying to get himself out of trouble. And he was surrounded by his own airmen there, but actually in the out, you can't see in the picture beyond him are lots of Russian soldiers. Um, it was rather a tense standoff. Then we go back to Gaza in 2014 again with Jane Corbyn, again the bombed out buildings in the background, and it's just a, you know, a very powerful picture, and you, it tells its own stories, and these things should tell their own stories. Um, Dr. David Healy is a psychiatrist, and he's involved very much heavily in sorting out the problems of, of Siroxat and the aftermath of Siroxat, and we were in, he was interviewed for, the, for, that, for that film again. Uh, this was a, a BAFTA award-winning film that I worked on for Panorama about um, Brook House, which is one of the um, immigration centres in uh, in London where they hold uh, prisoners or prisoners, yeah, uh, people who are going to be deported basically back to the country they're coming from. And we traced this guy who who had been in England, had been held in Brook House. Um, we traced him back to India, and Callum Tully, the, the journalist, was actually a, a very young man who's only 21, and he was one of the prison officers who was looking after this guy, and he was the whistleblower, and he did a lot of underwater, underwater, undercover filming, um, uh, which revealed the story and, and the program on a BAFTA, which was great. Um, it was always nice to do things like that. As part of the film about uh, Putin, the new Tsar, um, this is Gary Kasparov, who's a staunch anti-Putinist, talking to us about about Putin. And I managed to get some pictures of him while he was talking to the producer, uh, which was difficult because it, sometimes you don't get the chance to really take any photographs. So to get this with a bit of motion, it was actually quite interesting, I think. Um, and then Sergei Pugachev is also uh, a, an anti-Putinist who lives in Nice at the moment, and he... Um, he's an oligarch who uh, also has talked to us about about Putin, as was Natalia Gevorikian, if that's how you pronounce it. I'm not very good at my Russian pronunciations, I have to say, but she was in Paris, rather a, a bohemian kind of, kind of woman, really, always smoking a cigarette, and again, she was just talking away. She wouldn't didn't have the patience to stop and have her portrait taken, so I just snapped away and got what pictures I could. Um... Conversely, Jack Straw was much easier. We just got to the end of the interview, and I said to him, I said, Mr. Straw, could I take some pictures of you, please? And I took about five pictures, and this is one of them. And then we did subsequently an interview with William Hague, um, and I did pretty much the same thing. So this was taken with available light, um, just off Whitehall and in the Admiralty Building, I think, if I remember rightly. Um, and, of course, they're used to having their photograph taken, so it's not too difficult to, to get a good picture of them, to be honest. This is former Colonel Nick Borwell uh, of the British Army who served in Bosnia and he was telling us some of the stories about how he managed to defuse some of the conflict that was going on there when he was working there as part of the, the NATO contingent of the UN peacekeeping forces. A uh, very powerful interview that he gave and the Union flag behind him is the one that hung on the, uh, from the, the flagpole in his base uh, in when he was stationed in Bosnia. Professor John Todd is a um, professor of genetics um, and does a lot of work in you know, drugs working uh, against diabetes and things. Um, and I was filming him for a pharmaceutical company uh, and they wanted some pictures of him as well so I just took some pictures of him immediately after our interview. It's lit um, and you can see his whiteboard with all his calculations behind him whether they're actually calculations or not, but it looked pretty convincing to me. But you can't read it anyway, so you'd never know, would you? 
Julie Etchingham was a journalist that, you know, she's on ITN News all the time and she's a very well-known face on British television and we were doing some filming with her and I said, Julie, can I just take your picture, please? Because we were doing some stuff with her in a studio and I took about five pictures of her in the space of 30 seconds and this was the result. This was a lit, um, a lit uh, portrait um, which was exactly the same lighting as I'd used for, my, for, for, for lighting her for an interview. Uh, Tom Mangold, who I did a few films with, uh, quite a cheerful chap sometimes, quite a sultry other times. On this particular occasion, I managed to get the cheerfulness coming out. Um, filmed, photographed outside the BBC building um, in central London. And we were working together on a film then about Jeremy Thorpe, who was a discredited uh, uh, politician from the 1970s, um, who lost favour. He was the he was a, a liberal uh, leader of the liberal, uh, liberal Party at one point um, and he allegedly had an affair with this chap Norman Scott and uh, anyway the whole thing came out and it all ended rather nastily and there was rumours that or there were attempts made on Norman Scott's life um, when when the news came out that that uh, he and Norman Scott might have had been having a dalliance um, and I also made a film about uh, about the Profumo affair with uh, with with uh, Tom Mangold. Um, here he's photographed with Natalie Livingston. Tom Mangold had had uh, been involved with the Profumo affair as a as a journalist back in 1963, when he was a reporter on the Daily Mirror. And here he's photographed with Natalie Livingston, as I said, um, and she has written a book about about Clifton and and the, the, the things that have been going on there. Um, and this is just a rather pleasant, informal photograph of the two of them together, actually at the swimming pool uh, in Clifton, where some of the some of the action happened during the Profumo days. Uh, Steve Anderson was the uh, re the producer on that program, and here he is photographed in the Christine Keeler chair. Uh, the Christine Keeler chair being made famous by Christine Keeler because she was photographed naked, sitting in it in black and white, um, back in uh, sort of after the Profumo affair had, had had happened, and it was one of the things that she made her quite famous, I think, because she was um, anyway. So you can you can Google that photograph and see the original, which is probably better than the one I've done here. Um, we also did a film. Steve Anderson and I did a film about uh, Susie Lamplew together. And I'd done work with Su with the Lamplew family actually back in the 1980s after Susie Lamplew had disappeared. She was a, uh, an estate agent who disappeared in 1986, and she's never been found. And this was the the padre or the the the, the, the priest who was uh, from the local church who supported the the Lamplews during their ordeal. Um, this gentleman, I can't remember who he was. I think he might have been a police officer, and I can't remember exactly what we were interviewing for. But it was just a, just another sort of interesting face, I think. And I think that's ultimately what all this is about. These are all about faces. Uh, this lady was a publican, and she ran a pub uh, which was frequented by one Mick Philpot, who uh, murdered his six children in a arson a, a fire in his in his house um, in Derby. And then a couple of days later, he was in the pub, uh, buying everybody rounds of drinks, uh, and not seeming at least put out by the fact that his children had just been tragically killed in this dreadful fire. Uh, and Mary Philpotts, uh, that's Mick Philpotts' wife, uh, her father, Jimmy, uh, here, talked to us about the relationship, the turbulent relationship that Mary and 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 Mick Philpot had together. Uh, but Mick Philpot had a bit of form because he was re reasonably well known. He had made television programs before, these kind of reality TV type programs. And Anne Whittingham had been one of the people who'd been on a show with him because she went and lived with him uh, for two or three days and, and she gave us her opinion of what Milk Mick Philpot was like. Um, so I don't remember who this person is. Um, but I think she was from around the same time, one of these murder films that we were doing. And I took, again, some photographs of her. And this just illustrates how people can look so much better if you just change, turn their bodies around a little bit. So here she is looking straight to camera. And then I got her, and I often do this, I got, got her to turn her shoulders towards camera a little bit. And now she's looking over the shoulder, and it's just a, a much, much more interesting photograph, I think. And then while we're doing a lot of these interviews as well, one of, uh, one of the production coordinator that we were working with uh, sat in for me because she said she wanted a couple of pictures, so I, she sat in and I just 
took a couple of pictures of her. I just thought it was rather nice, so I thought I'd include this in my in my uh, portfolio. Um, I went to Iraq in 2010 and uh, did a lot of work around the marshlands in southern Iraq. And this was a, one of the marsh Arab boys that uh, that I spotted, and I just thought that was rather an interesting photograph. This this face uh, it was taken on quite a long lens as well. Um, which is why he's kind of isolated from the background and he, st he stands out. Uh, these guys were part of our the tactical support unit, the police, the Iraqi police, who were helping to give us a bit of security while we were working in the marshes. But we also had a security detail that were working with us who were mainly British and South African ex-Special Forces guys, ex-British Army um, soldiers, a good bunch of guys actually. Uh, so this was a portrait I did of Wayne and another one that I took of Bruce, who bo were both part of our security detail. Ali Ross was a ski instructor, or is a ski instructor, who was working in Teen. Uh, we did a film about him, which was a kind of training film about how to um, uh, how to ski, um, which is not something I do. I'm quite good at watching it, but I'm not very good at partaking in it. Uh, and then we did a film about... Uh, about the, the state of the British railways, particularly up north, the northern railways in the UK, which have got uh, uh, very bad uh, press because they don't work very well. And this is uh, Richard Wilson, who plays Victor Mildrew in One Foot in the Grave, and he's the, your archetypal British grumpy old man. And we had him doing the presenting on that film, and it worked very well. And as you can see, he looks quite grumpy there. Then we went off on another job up to um, Shetland to film some junk mail, and you know some of the remote Scottish islands they get delivered junk mail for shops, which the closest one is you know tens of miles away, and they can't get to it unless they go by boat. And this was just a photograph I took of Tom Heap on the right, uh, who's the journalist with our producer when we were waiting for an aeroplane to arrive and pick us up to take us somewhere. Um, I spent four days of my life with Don McCullen, who is one of my heroes, I suppose, photographic heroes. He doesn't like to be called a war photographer, but that's really what he's known as. Um, he's, his pictures from Vietnam and from Cyprus and, and Biafra and uh, other conflict zones are legendary, and they're, they're world-famous photographs. And I took this photograph of him on the beach in, Sw in uh, Scarborough, in Yorkshire, which is uh, a beach he had photographed some guys playing football in the 1960s, and we revisited the, the scene of the crime as it was with him, and I took eight frames of him when I had 30 seconds of downtime, and, and this was one of them, and it's, a, it's one of my favourite portraits actually, and it's great to have a picture of somebody like Sir Don McCullen, um, photographed like that, and it is very intimidating when you're trying to take a picture of somebody like Sir Don McCullen and trying to beat him at his own game. It doesn't always work. Um, Adam Shaw is a journalist and we did, did a, another film about trains actually. And this was him outside uh, Platform 1 I think at Paddington Station. Another quick grab shot because I'm sure we weren't supposed to be photographing there at all. Uh, and then Tom Mangold again, this is part of the Profumo film. We, we filmed, uh, I photographed him just outside Wimpole Mews which is where uh, Stephen Ward lived, I, I believe, um, and Stephen Pound was also, I think his father was involved in the Profumo affair somehow, uh, as one of the MPs, I, I don't remember the details to be honest, um, but this guy, Geoffrey Robinson, who's very well known in the UK, um, journalist and, and also a, key, a KC, he's a barrister, um, had written this book about Stephen Ward who was uh, basically, he he committed suicide because he was being accused of all sorts of nasty things. Um, and so it's nice to see a portrait here of somebody with uh, something like a book because that comes out well and the expression on the face is good and this is obviously a lit um, portrait as well. <clears throat> then I, in 2019, I went on a one-week, very brief, in-out trip um, into southern Somalia, which is not the most sensible place in the world to visit, uh, with Jamal Osman, he was the reporter, and we went into the bush, um, and we had to be dressed up in um, flak jackets and stuff like that, because it was potentially quite a dangerous area, and we were working with the Somali Somalia militia, 
Um, and here we were before we went out on that little jaunt with the soldiers behind us. But, you know, you can take photographs of not just individuals. You can put uh, individuals with groups of people behind them. But you can also take photographs of the group behind them with the guy in the front being, if you like, the portrait. Uh, why not? You, you know, why not photograph groups of people like that? Um, I also went to Sousse in Tunisia immediately, uh, immediately, I mean like 24 hours after the, the massacre there um, of 20, 39 people, I think it was 39 people on the beach, um, mainly British tourists, uh, they were machine gunned by, um, uh, by a local guy and a lot of people ran away and this was the shop where many of them hid and this is the shopkeeper who told us the story about what happened that day. Um, and one of the people who managed to get away from, without being injured, I don't think, I don't think she was anyway, uh, but she was on a sun lounger on the beach when the guy attacked and she just played dead and she got away with it, um, but many of the people around her did not. So her story was quite, uh, quite harrowing. On a slightly lighter note, and again, more crime really, this is Andrew Jennings who famously turned over the corruption in the International Olympic Com Committee, the IOC, and then when he finished with them he went on to, to FIFA and he spent a good ten years of his life turning over FIFA and um, I always thought that the film that I made with him, or I made two or three films with him actually, was should have been called Set Blatter, the, My Part and His Downfall. Um, but anyway, Andrew Jennings, who uh, great journalist, great investigative journalist, unfortunately no, no longer with us, but um, he sadly missed. And then on a slightly no lighter note, this is Jenny, who's a professional model that I've done, done some work with recently, um, just to show what you can do with somebody who just picks up a pose and you just photograph her. And you photograph her again, slightly differently. They're both beautiful photographs, but really the best one, I think, is this one. And I'm going to close on this picture of Jenny, which I took at the end of last year. Um, thank you for watching. I hope you found it interesting, and I'd love your feedback. Um, and if you want to know more information about any of these pictures,